A plume border is simply a combination of vertical shells and drop strings. So I'm going to start off by just making a simple row of tip number 21 shells. And then I'm going to take a small round tip, either a two or a three, and I'm going to make drop strings. And when you're first learning to do these, just have some patience and understand that it does take a little bit of time to get the hang of the drop strings. Um, you gotta learn your pressure control and um, sometimes the icing doesn't wanna cooperate and it'll break. So just take your time with the drop strings and you will get the hang of it. This particular plume border has a triple drop string. So I like to do the top drop strings first and then just add the lower ones as I go. And then once you have all of your strings piped, you'll pipe dots where they join together to kind of finish them off. Remember the trick with doing dots is to totally release pressure on the bag before you pull the tip away to avoid having any kind of peak or pimple in the middle. So to start off, we're just gonna pipe a simple shell and remember to hold the tip steady for a split second so that the icing can build up in front of the tip before you gradually release pressure as you pull away. That's what creates the, sh the, the shell's tail. And then to do the drop strings, remember you're gonna to touch the tip to the surface and then squeeze using steady pressure as you pull the tip away and then let the icing kind of fall where you want it. As opposed to keeping the tip close to the surface and tracing the line, you're really pulling the tip away, letting the icing fall out of the tip and you'll be able to see kind of where to place the drop string a little bit easier that way. Don't forget to pipe a dot where all the drop strings come together to help hide that join and give it a more finished look. Once you've mastered piping shells, you can really do a lot with them, especially when you combine them with other techniques. Like here, we're doing the plume border by combining shells with some drop strings, and you can do a similar thing with the crown borders and the chandelier borders. So, you know, whereas you do need a little bit of patience to learn to pipe the drop strings, you can really do a lot with them. They're very versatile. Here's a more head-on view of piping the plume border. Remember you want to let the icing build up in front of the star tip to give you a nice rounded top to your shell. And when you're doing your drop strings, remember to touch the icing to the surface so that it attaches and then pull the tip away and then let the icing fall where you want it. And then you'll touch the tip back to the surface to reattach it. When you're first learning how to do drop strings, it may be easier to practice with the board flat on the table like this. Um, and then once you progress past doing that, then you know you can prop the practice board up so that it's m more vertical, like you would be piping the drop strings on the side of a cake. And it's perfectly acceptable to make tiny little adjustments as necessary so that the icing falls where you want it. And then again, I'm just going to pipe dots here where the strings come together to help give it a finished look and to hide the join. And now for the side view. Notice that my right hand does not actually move much when I first start piping the shell. That's because I'm letting the icing come up and in front of the tip and build up to make that nice rounded head. And then I gradually release pressure as I pull the piping bag um, back towards me and that's what finishes the shell. Sorry if I sound kind of repetitive at this point but again you know notice that with the string work you touch the tip to the surface so that the icing attaches and then you lift it up and let the icing fall where you want it and that's different from just dragging the tip along the surface like you were tracing an outline with a pencil. You know you have actually much more control over where the icing falls if you lift it up away from the surface.
And don't forget to finish it all off with some dots to hide where the strings join. And that's your plume border.